Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about the different retouching tools in Photoshop. Uh, we're going to kind of just go over the basic ones that are specific to kind of where we're at right now in the semester. Um, so jumping right in, we're going to start with the Spot Healing Brush Tool. It kind of looks like a band-aid and it has kind of like these running ants. Um, it's a really great tool when it comes to um, restoring these old photographs that we are um, coming up to. So let me get right to it. You'll find it right here. It looks like the Band-Aid with the running ants. Once you select it, make sure that you do have sample all layers and you're not editing right directly on your photo. Remember, we want to edit non-destructively. So you actually have a brush that you'll be using so you have all of the kind of brush settings i usually like to leave it at a low hardness so it kind of has a nice feathered blending edge so coming over to the photograph um, for this demo um, you can kind of see there's a crack right here so i can kind of take my brush might want to take it down just a little bit and just click and drag kind of painting in that crack and it kind of uses almost like an AI, artificial intelligence, just kind of proximity match, content aware. You can see all of these things right here. And it knows kind of pulling from what it's saying is similar to that area and fixing that crack. And it's pretty nice and quick and easy to just kind of come in and paint in some of these blemishes. and spot heal and repair these. Um, sometimes it's not the best for big areas and you can actually see because I have sample all layers on, it grabbed my base layer. So I'm just gonna undo, kind of go in and bring back some of the rest of this stuff for the rest of this demo, great. So now moving on, under the same Spot Healing Brush Tool, if you click and hold, you'll see that there are more tools in here. The next one we're gonna talk about is the Patch Tool. Let me actually move my selector to the one we're talking about. It looks like a patch with the stitches along the sides. So coming back over to the Patch Tool, remember it's underneath your Spot Healing Brush Tool. Using the Patch Tool, it repairs um, imperfections in a selected area using um, a sample or pattern. So pretty much what you do to use this tool is I would actually come around here and grab the, st uh, the crack in the image. Once I kind of have the running ants, from there I can actually drag, oops, sorry. Actually, I'm not on the right layer. It's having me do this directly on the image, which is not ideal. But from there, I can move this patch over. Deselect. And now you can see that it's sampled from over here to fix the crack in the image there using the patch tool. Um, I'll kind of do something dramatic so that you guys can see kind of how this works. If I let go there, it completes the image. And then from there, if I click and drag, deselect. So it tries to kind of like a large selection of like the spot healing brush tool it, with a little bit of the a tool that we're gonna talk about next, which is the clone stamp tool. Um, but it allows you to usually do big areas. Let me undo, deselect. All right, so moving on is a tool that probably most people are familiar with, with just basic photo editing. And unfortunately, I didn't grab a good image to show this, so I'm just gonna show you where it's located. It is the red eye, um, red eye tool. It removes the red eye reflection caused by a flash. Um, again, you would find that if you click and hold 
where the spot healing brush tool is, which is now showing my patch tool because I just used that. It's right here at the bottom is the red eye tool. And when you click it, it then lets you select the different red eye on the image. And this is again, not the best image to just show this on, but I'm just trying to show you what is available to you guys under the retouching tools. So resetting this back to the spot healing brush tool, just so everything looks cohesive and where it should be. We're gonna move on to the clone stamp tool. Let me get my selector, move tool. And it looks like a stamp. You'll find it right down here below your paintbrush. So the clone stamp tool kind of working similarly to the spot healing brush tool, but the first thing that you need to do, I'm going to actually go to my editing layer now because this does kind of let you do non-destructively sample current and below. Perfect. So you do get the brush similar to the spot healing brush tool, but before you start working, you actually need to hold down alt or option. And you can see that your selector changes, your paintbrush changes to a selector. So once you sample an area, it allows you to paint with that selection. You can actually see the plus mark moving with my brush tool. And then you might need to stop and grab a new selection and then continue. So this is the clone stamps tool. It's painting with a sample of your image and putting that sample where you are painting. All right, so I'm actually just gonna remove that editing layer and make a new one. And moving on, and this probably would have been a great way to show this, so I'm actually gonna go back so that my clone stamping is still there on the editing layer and a tool that I feel like does still need to be discussed um, is the eraser tool the eraser tool you can find it um, right above the paint bucket now this tool can be used destructively um, you don't want to ever take your eraser tool directly onto your original image because remember when you're editing non-destructively um, you don't want to take away original data of your image original pixels so the eraser tool usually will come um, into play if you're working on an editing layer for example here where i might have gotten a little too crazy with my clone stamp tool and i can just come in and I actually have a soft edge kind of brush to my eraser and erase some of those edits. So that's a great way to use the eraser tool instead of taking it directly onto your original image. The next tool set we're going to talk about is the blur, sharpen, and smudge. So let me come down here to my selector. So the blur tool looks like a water droplet. So if you're kind of trying to look through water, it does blur, um, which is a great way to kind of try to remember these icons. Um, going right over into it, and it looks like I might have changed it to the smudge. So I'm going to actually change it back to blur. Um, have a big, big, big area. So I'm going to actually take that down. Making sure sample all layers is on because we don't want to edit directly onto the original image. So I'm working in my editing layer and I'm just going to start blurring. So as you paint, it does blur the image. And in contrast, if you click and hold the blur, you'll get to the sharpen, which is kind of the 
short way to think about it is uh, a sharpened water droplet, right? It's kind of in that same triangular shape. So now if you come to sharpen, you have also a brush tool. Not a brush tool, but a brush-like um, feel when you're kind of brushing in the sharpen. So I know it's kind of hard to see, but it is for sure sharpening. When I undo, you'll be able to see it. Um, it does have like a nice protected detail where it tries to use a little bit of AI so it doesn't get too crazy. Um, but it is possible for you to check that, uncheck that and just kind of let it do what it needs to do. And I actually have the strength set at 10%. So kind of taking it up a little crazy, it'll start giving us some really kind of creepy, crazy looking stuff. Uh, the next one in this set is the smudge tool. I actually didn't move my selector for the sharpen. So we've got blur, sharpen, and smudge. The best way to kind of remember it um, is if you're finger painting and you're having to smudge the paint, what would your hand look like? Um, so I'm going to go back up to my editing layer, come here and move it to the smudge tool. Make sure that sample all layers is on. And oh, interesting, it actually has a finger painting. So if you're working with just colors and not images. Um, this could be great for like smoothing out hair. And I'll show it right now. But working in small kind of strokes with it. Probably would also work great with um, actually kind of doing digital paintings as well and kind of giving that painterly look. And I'll kind of do a crazy smudge just to show you guys as well. So I'm actually now going to delete my editing layer. Yes, I'm sure. Um, and moving on to the next set of tools, which is your dodge, your burn and your sponge tools. So getting over with my selector, the first one we're going to talk about is the dodge tool. The dodge tool lightens an area of the image. So it kind of lets you come in and paint in light. Um, at the top, you can see it. Now it's right here. It's going to be right below your blur, smudge and sharpen. Um, and right now I have the range set as mid-tones with an exposure of 100%, protect tones. Um, unfortunately, you do have to use this right on your original image. Um, I'm not sh quite sure exactly why, but I would assume it's because it does need to directly work with these pixels um, and the information of the data within your image. It needs to directly work with those. So a great way to work with these tools um, non-destructively is to duplicate your um, base layer, your original image, and then lock your original image and then edit with your um, any of these tools, the dodge, the burn, and the sponge um, on their own separate layer of that image. So coming in with the dodge tool, you can see as I paint it in, it does lighten the image. I have mid-tones, I'm gonna select shadows and you can see it'll bring out the shadows as I'm painting along. Um, moving on to the burn tool. Kind of looks like that hand. I kind of laugh and say, if you got an Italian burn, what would the hand look like? And um, it's kind of a silly way to remember it, but hey, sometimes it works. Um, so again, having to work directly on the image, I'm gonna come into my dodge, click and hold, and there's the burn tool. Um, it's set to mid-tones, exposure 51%. So as you can see, as I start painting in the burn, it starts darkening my image. I can set it to highlights to kind of bring back some of the highlights. And 
And then the last one is going to be the sponge tool. It changes the color saturation of the area. So you can actually saturate or desaturate with the sponge tool. And the sponge tool kind of looks like this speckled blob. Um, going back over here and clicking, it looks more like a sponge when it's smaller. Um, but right now it's set to desaturate. Um, so we'll actually saturate first. We'll set the flow up so it'll. we can only just have to do one pass here. But as I'm saturating, you can kind of see that orangey color come through of that image. I'll actually bump it up 100% flow so it's really dramatic. So I'm not gradually building because that's what the flow does. It lets you gradually build. But right now, just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to bump it all the way up. Now I'm going to desaturate and it lets it take it to more of a true black and white image, which is great for when you're coming in to colorize. So if there is a stain or anything on your image, you might want to come in with the sponge tool and desaturate. And that is the basic retouching tools for um, Adobe Photoshop.